Oh, this is terrifying. Time to get naked, everyone. <laughs> what? <laughs> So every once in a while, I get into this mood where I want to re-edit an old film project that I've worked on. Cause I'm like, oh, I've learned a lot. You know, I've been making videos and I've been learning things. Can I make a project better now with the skills that I have? And nine out of 10 times, the answer is no. <laughs> because you can't reshoot, you can't rewrite, you can't, you know, use different camera settings or whatever. I mean, you can fix some things, but for the most part, if there's just one shot of something and that shot is bad, you can't re-edit the project around that, right? Like it is what it is. But in 2015, I made an observational documentary called Devil's Lettuce, where basically I just followed around my friends Brooke and Alex as they went on a photo session, you know, through rural Pennsylvania in these weird abandoned houses. And my friend Anthony and I filmed for hours. I have hours of footage. That project was so fun for me and so influential on my style, like that avant-garde, just like observational filming things as they happen and just like letting things play out has been really influential on like my YouTube videos. And so I thought, wow, this could be a really interesting thing to re-edit, to like go in with my new skills and my new taste and all of these things and try to rework the documentary. So that's what this video is gonna be about, me doing that. If you wanna watch the original Devil's Lettuce, I'll link to it. And then I'll also link to the finished product of this one so you can compare them, see what's changed, see if I did a better job. Hopefully it's good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is rewatch the footage because there's a lot of it and it was eight years ago, so I don't really remember. And I'm gonna add little markers where there are interesting bits. And that way I can get like a sense of what I want this story to be because since I'm telling a different story a little bit with the editing, I wanna make sure I have a good sense of, you know, what I want, the challenges, etc. cetera. <laughs> These are definitely your moms. It's going down my tits. Shh, she's smiling. You can sit in my class. One thing that I do know is that I don't want the making of the documentary to be a part of the documentary, which means I'll have to cut around my voice, Anthony's voice, if we're in the shots. I don't want the making of to leak into this. So am I gonna be in the picture right here? Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> You're still gonna be in there. You're still in it. You're still in it. How far? God damn it. Gel my hair every day since the day I was born, but. That on me. That was Or at least that's the goal. So I've watched all the footage, and the next step in my process is to just sort of drag in the clips that I think are interesting to sort of set a foundation for my edit. Fortunately, this is all in chronological order. It was shot in chronological order. I want the finished product to be in chronological order so I can just sort of plop them in. I thought for a second about maybe going out of order, like doing something fun with time, but I think this will be, the final product is gonna be too short and I don't want people to be confused. Like that's not what this is about. So chronological order. We used two cameras. I pretty much shot the wider big picture stuff and then Anthony did a lot of beauty stuff. So I'm just dealing with my camera right now. You know, big broad strokes. I'm gonna go in later and do the fine tuning. This is just to get from A to B, basically. It's been a day. I laid everything out and I walked away from it for a little bit. Let my brain decompress. And now I've come back and I've started doing the fine slicing and dicing. You know, I've added Anthony's camera. And so basically my process is just like fat and then snip, 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 snip. And then once it gets snipped, you really start to pull it out. You start to focus on interesting moments. And so that's what I'm gonna do. This part could take a couple of days, but I'm really excited to work on it. I'm actually like excited to see what comes from it. So I was up until 1 a.m. last night working on this project, which is crazy. I haven't been this excited to work on an, on any project really in so long. And it feels so good to like be back and like want to work. Like I woke up this morning, I'm like, oh, let's get to it, which is so cool. I haven't felt that way in a long time. But anyway, I got the edit ready to go. It's, if we can, uh, here you see, this is the timeline. Um, I could condense some of this a little bit to make it neater, but I'm not gonna do that. So now that I have the edit more or less locked, I'm going to move on to the audio passes. I did some tests earlier on to see if I could get that static sound to go away. I don't want it to sound tinny, and so I'm getting rid of it as much as I can without ruining it. Okay, so I've gone through and I've added the two effects here, the parametric equalizer, which looks like this. And this does a really good job of removing that staticky sound in the high end. It does kind of dampen the sound a little bit, so it doesn't sound as crisp, but 
uh, I think that's a fair trade to avoid the tinny sound. And then I've also added a denoiser, just a 20% underneath the parametric equalizer. This goes in basically after the staticky sound is removed and just does a, a little bit more of a static removal. So, and then I also went through and I, there's some moments here that are loud or that need lifted a little bit. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the result here. I'll play a bit. Fucking water. <laughs> Why doesn't it feel like it? Okay, do you have a hairbrush? Yeah. And then this is the cleanup version. It's fucking water. Why doesn't it feel like it? Okay, do you have a hairbrush? Yeah. So, you know, a, a big improvement for sure. So one thing I forgot to show you when I finished it was that I added music. I just sprinkled it in on the more cinematic parts like here and here. I couldn't find anything that fit really well for the beginning stuff. So I just left it the just plain audio and I think it's okay. And then I spent probably an hour <laughs> on this credit sequence here. Cause I, I just kept, I only have so many photos of Alex's from this type. And so I was just trying to fit it all in. I really wanted this boom, boom, finding pictures that could like do the, like this one. I really wanted that vibe. Uh, and I'm, I'm really pleased actually with how it has turned out. So the next thing I did was a loudness normalization, which uh, has been such a critical like discovery. And Curtis Judd has a really good video on it. So I'm just gonna link to it. So I don't have to explain what it is, but basically it just makes your YouTube videos all sound as loud as they can be without clipping. And it's amazing. It really just elevates, and I do it to all my videos. And when I go back to watch old videos, I can tell that it's not done because it sounds like dog shit. So next up is the nightmare phase, which is color. I'm really bad at it. I don't really know what I'm doing. And that's with, you know, 10-bit color and S-Log. This is 8-bit, like really, really bad quality footage and no leverage with color. So I'm gonna export this timeline as a quick time. I'm gonna re-import it into DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to scene detect it and then I'm going to try to save some of the stuff that looks really orange and we'll see how it goes. So I built a computer to edit on but I didn't want to move over to edit on it yet but after this computer crashed three times while working on the video I've finally moved over and now I'm editing on the big boy. <laughs> Okay, so here we are in DaVinci and I've done some work with the color space, which you can sort of see when I click this. You can see how orange it is here and here. It's because there's really bright tungsten lights on the kitchen and that's throwing this orange. And then obviously the outside light, which is doing most of the illumination in the room is casting a cool like 5,000 Kelvin. And so the goal is to bring in the blues a little bit, which makes the whites look a little bit more natural. It still kind of looks like shit. <laughs> still doesn't look super good, but only being eight bit color and kind of overexposed in this. There's only so much that can be done. Maybe if I was better at color grading, I could do more with this, but for now that's the, the change. And then another thing that I did is adding a noise reduction, a 14 point Eight. and it did a pretty good job here watch you can see like you can see the noise here and here well you might not actually be able to see that I don't know what the YouTube compression is gonna do to the noise so there's a chance you might not see what I'm talking about <laughs> it's really apparent when I play the clip <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks like jello. yeah it's really bad and then so you run it again <laughs> it's cleaned up uh, pretty significantly you know, we were shooting with bad cameras and low light and uh, there's just a whole bunch of things that eight years ago were done that now this is the best that we can do. And uh, I think it's really noticeable. If you watch the original versus this, the work that I've done color-wise, I think you'll notice a pretty big difference. Another thing that I did color-wise was matching the cameras, which was pretty easy. I just took Anthony's beautiful shot that was like warm and rich and just matched it to this gross. So that was just like pumping up the green and the the cool tones and sort of matching. So this, I think I'm really pleased with the way the color looks. It's just that first little chunk in the kitchen that doesn't look as good as I would like it to, but it, it looks so bad that I just admitted it from the first edit, you know, in 2015, this scene is not in it. And I, I really like it. It's a good moment. So I think it's good enough. You know, I think the story, uh, what's actually happening on the screen carries it. So it's not that distracting. As I was doing color, I noticed that there were a couple of moments where the sound was really bad. Like you could really hear the grain more so than others. The quiet bits were really sort of off-putting. So I went back through and I added more music. It helps control the tone a little bit and it helps keep that lower threshold filled with something that's not just like awkward space. And then I went in and I dragged all of the clips, the colored clips in and then here's the final thing i compressed everything so this is the final loudness normalized audio this is all the color brought down and then i added an adjustment layer that was just to pull up the saturation just a little bit across the whole thing i also went in and i tweaked the titles a little bit in after effects just to give them a little bit of jitter because i like that softness i also decided that i didn't want the title to be devil's lettuce anymore 
that was a title that was like an inside joke and I honestly the thing that I regret the most about this project is naming it that because it's just silly so I've renamed it because I can do whatever I want and I've named it they are not coming back and I am very pleased with that title I think it's a fitting title thematically with the piece another thing that I've learned in my YouTube journey is that you always want to take a 1080p final project and up res it to a 4k project because that makes it look way better on YouTube it helps with the compression it doesn't really help with this one specifically because the footage is kind of shitty, but uh, it's just a tip. So I exported it and I posted it onto YouTube and you can watch it. It'll be down and it'll be up in the corner and it will be just on my page and you can let me know what you think. The origin for the idea of this project came in like October where I was like feeling nostalgic. I was on Tumblr or something and I saw posts from then. I was like, oh man, it would be kind of fun to like revisit that footage. Um, but I looked at the footage and I was like, oh no, it's like, you know, the nostalgia only cared so far. And then last week I was like, I won't have to shoot anything if I re-edit it. Because <laughs> honestly, the shooting aspect of these videos is the part that I don't really like that much, or I like it the least. And so to be able to make a cool project without having to shoot anything was really incredible. And it really got me super excited. Like I was very excited the whole time to work on this project, which hasn't happened in a long time. And I think the nostalgia aspect was also like a big factor. Like it really was like so long ago, especially when there was a finished product. So like my memory of that time was the finished documentary. And so then to see all the parts that were cut out was very interesting. But yeah, it makes me want to make more videos like this. So I think I'm going to have to start filming more of everything. But hopefully you enjoy this video. Hopefully you will enjoy the documentary. Uh, hopefully it's clear that I've learned more about cameras <laughs> and uh, ISO and audio. But anyway, thanks for watching. See ya. Wait, why is that? Why is the focus just so bad just there for a second? Maybe I haven't learned anything.